guys, welcome back to the channel where I cover missing persons, unsolved cases, crime news, and more. So this case, this particular missing person has been going on and I've been sort of following it, but it's gotten so strange and tragic that I just, I just had to start digging into it. Uh, those of you probably have heard about it if you follow on the news. Uh, 30 year, 31, excuse me, 31 year old uh, Hannah Kobasashi, and I'm probably saying her last name incorrectly, and I do apologize. Uh, she was she initially caught a flight from Maui on November 8th to New York City, but she did not get onto her connecting flight in Los Angeles. Uh, now, her loved ones state that they, she was supposed to meet her family in New York, specifically her aunt, and she also had a handwritten itinerary stating bucket list dreams become a reality. But instead, she has only been seen fleetingly on surveillance videos while they have received, received many alarming and out-of-character text messages from her phone. Now, I am going to go through the timeline, but Hannah is described as a 5 foot 10 inches tall and approximately 140 pounds. She has brown hair, brown eyes, and freckles on her face. She also has a tattoo of a knife on one of her forearms. And this became even more tragic, this case, when the body of her father, Ryan, was discovered this past Sunday in Los Angeles near the airport where he had spent... 13 days searching for his daughter in an apparent unaliving uh, tragedy. So this family has a, a lot going on, uh, especially during this beginning of the holidays. Hannah Kobayashi's aunt drove six hours from Big Sur to Los Angeles to try and help find her niece. Airport authorities released this photo taken before Hannah was supposed to get on her connecting flight to New York on November 8th. It, the LAPDX has been helpful. They have been trying to find Cece's footage. We got that picture of her deboarding the airplane. Her family says texts seemed to change tone before stopping completely. And a strange post on her Instagram on November 10th with a LeBron James and Nike logo was discovered to be from an event at The Grove. They searched the internet for any video taken by attendees and found this short clip that shows Hannah walking with headphones on. We are 100% positive. And as of today, we spoke with that videographer who made that video and got a timestamp that she was here at the Grove at 3.40 p.m. on Sunday. This is going on six days that we have not seen her. And her phone has been off for six days. Kenna's sweet and loving and kind, and she wouldn't make any of us worry. Hannah's dad and another aunt are also in California to find her. Hannah's older sister is flying out tonight to help too, while her mom will remain in Hawaii with Hannah's baby sister, Hope. We have like an unwritten rule that we always check in. That no matter if it's me, Sid, Hope, or Hannah, that we, it's like, okay, I'm here and I'm safe. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a normal behavior of hers to just completely disappear or to... To have something so planned out, um, because once she has her mindset on something as far as traveling, and become hell or high water, she's there. And that is why we are so grateful for the news outlets, for the media, for everyone covering this and trying to help us find our missing, you know, niece, daughter, sister. Hannah's phone was last located at the Los Angeles International Airport on November 11th. Anyone who's seen her or has any information about her whereabouts is asked to call LAPD or LA Regional Crime Stoppers. Uh, a, a lot of people are posting about uh, the case, obviously, on X, a.k.a. Twitter. I still can't get used to it being X, but that's beside the point. Um, SF Investigates, um, Steve Fisher uh, he is a uh, private investigator. Uh, he went out there and uh, he posted some stuff on his Twitter. Uh, here is one of his posts. Uh, he stated, I finished searching for Hannah uh, for the day and have decided to step back from the search altogether. I have seen much of the evidence and I now believe there is a strong possibility that Hannah is seeking time alone and may be exploring a spiritual path. 
One detail that continues to raise questions is her travel itinerary. We were informed that she was flying from Maui to JFK via Lax. However, I've seen surveillance footage showing her deplaning at Lax without any bags, followed by footage of her leaving the Lax baggage claim area with a suitcase and backpack displaying claim tickets. If her bags were only checked to Lax, then her ticket was only booked to Lax. By law, passengers cannot check their luggage to a destination they are not traveling to. Even if her bags were rerouted, this would mean she filed a report at LAX and remained there for at least 16 hours to retrieve them. Additionally, Hannah posted on Instagram from an event at the Grove in Los Angeles. She had previously expressed a desire to... Three, two, one. Additionally, Hannah posted on Instagram from an event at the Grove in Los Angeles. She had previously expressed a desire to visit the Redwoods in Northern California, citing a deep personal connection to the area. She, had, she even has a close friend posting and encouraging her to continue her path to stay on her journey. Despite media reports suggesting hard evidence that Hannah is being drugged and trafficked, the LAPD has classified her as a voluntary missing person. If there were concrete evidence of abduction or trafficking, she would be categorized as endangered and her case would be handled as an abduction. To date, LAPD detectives have not made any public statements about the case despite widespread media attention. I am not suggesting that the search for Hannah should cease. However, I personally feel uncomfortable continuing without clear evidence that she is not a voluntary missing person. We cannot be certain of her circumstances, and I would be deeply, deeply troubled to play a role in returning someone to a situation they may be trying to escape. To be clear, I have no definitive proof that she hasn't been abducted or is not being held against her will. She very well could be. But my professional instinct leads me to believe that stepping back is the right course of action for now. If Hannah happens to see this message, I hope she understands that she can contact law enforcement to confirm her safety. It is not a crime to go missing and law enforcement will not disclose her location if she is safe and capable of caring for herself. Exactly. So that is his take on it. Steve's take on it. SF investigates and... That's still a possibility. Again, the only reason why I question is the text messages and then her father unaliving himself. The strange text messages and her father's actions make me think there is a lot more going on than just she wants to go off and be alone spiritually or what have you. And another uh, post of interest on... Uh, Twitter, aka X, um, it's from Nerdy Addict. Uh, he had posted that Hannah missed her connecting flight to New York City and Los Angeles, and surveillance footage captured her leaving the airport and boarding the metro heading downtown. The following day, a TikTok video placed her at the Grove Shopping Center. That same day, she sent a Venmo payment to two unknown individuals. Now, that is odd. For sure. Uh, the law enforcement can definitely investigate that. And I'm sure they've been on that way yesterday or the day before yesterday. Uh, let's see. On November 11th, her mother texted to ask if she made it to New York. Uh, Hannah replied no, adding messages to friends about feeling unsafe and fearing someone was trying to steal her money and identity. I got tricked pretty much into giving away all my funds from someone I thought I loved, she wrote. But... Some messages didn't sound like her at all, peppered with unfamiliar words like hun. A photo was posted to her Instagram later that day, but no one has heard from her since. Uh, yesterday, this is actually from November 25th, so this was yesterday, so this would have been Sunday. Uh, yesterday at 4 a.m., Hannah's father, who had been tirelessly searching for her in Los Angeles, lost hope. Overwhelmed by despair, he jumped from a parking garage near Lax, ending his own life. Again, I don't, I don't know if I feel like he was helpless, hopeless, or if there's something else to it. Uh, as always, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on that. 
do you think that he and his father uh, jumped because he was just so depressed and full of despair that he he couldn't you know you know contain himself anymore or do you think there could be something else to it let me know in the comments and here's a earlier news piece from about five days ago uh, speaking with her family and uh, now deceased uh, her father Ryan as well the FBI is now investigating what happened to Hannah Kobayashi. The 30-year-old missed a connecting flight from LAX to New York on November 8th. Instead, it appears she toured the Grove Shopping Center and went to a local event in the following days. Her family says they received text messages from her that were out of character, and they also obtained new surveillance video that shows her near the Pico Metro station. And they say she wasn't alone in that footage. They think she was abducted or even trafficked. And joining me now is her father and her aunt, Ryan Kobayashi, and Lori uh, Pigeon. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so sorry it's under these circumstances. I know it's been, Thank you. must be an agonizing time for you right now. How are you, how are you doing? Um, we're really tired, um, but we are remaining hopeful um, and we are remaining, you know, vigilant, you know. Yeah. What have you learned? All these clues are kind of emerging. There's images and surveillance video. You saw the images at LAX. What, have, what are you learning on a daily basis and what is the very latest in the case? Um, so we, you know, through our own investigative work, um, we've kind of tracked her down. Um, you know, just a quick synopsis, she missed her flight. You know, she ran, she was trying to connect her flight. We believe that she was on standby. Um, and that because of that, she was going and, and just basically exploring LA. Um, we have found out that she did charge her phone on Saturday. Um, an employee confirmed it. We actually got uh, proof of her filling out in her own handwriting, um, a mailing list with her address in Hawaii. Um, and then, um, you know, things, that's when things got really fuzzy was on Monday with the weird, very strange text messages that were coming to her family. And we were made aware of video surveillance um, that shows her with an unidentified person um, exiting the, you know, around the, the Pico Metro station. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of where our, where we, where we lose her. And Brian, can you talk about those text messages and why they were so out of character for her? Well, just the wording that she mm -hmm. used and just seemed kind of odd, off, off base, yeah. And she said something about giving away her, her money to someone she thought she was in love with or something. What, what did they say? Yeah, she it, it basically said that um, she was, gave all her funds away. And just the word funds, mm -hmm. not money, not cash, um, to someone that she loved. Um, another thing is that Hannah speaks in emojis. Even if you look at her Instagram profile, it's thousands of emojis. And within these texts, there's not a single emoji. Um, and it's just stealing her identity. Um, you know, she had a spiritual awakening. It was just, it was bizarre. You know, like it, and, and so it wasn't out of character for her. And her loved ones would know, family and friends. Uh, we all have our way that we text, we post on social media. And uh, if she's using words like funds instead of money, um, you know, and the fact that she's not using these emojis, it does make you wonder if someone has well, at that point, had Hannah's phone and were texting, uh, pretending to be Hannah. And, and Ryan, if you could talk to her, if she could see this message from you, if she could see some of your appearances, uh, what would be your message to her? Right love now? you, Hannah. You know, just love all the love and support she has. Everybody's praying for her safe return. And, you know, we're just grateful for everything that everybody's been outpouring as been overwhelming yeah, yeah yeah and what is she like as a person oh she's the kindest heart you know and everything about her was just beautiful you know yeah so this entire situation with hannah and her family it's so it's so strange and sad you know it's it's a combination of both uh, I do find it odd that, uh, as part of the statement that the family gave uh, recently after after the uh, father Ryan's uh, his uh, unaliving, 
but they stated Hannah is still actively missing and believed to be in imminent danger. Now that's from the family. Okay. So if they believe she's in imminent danger, that to me is some red flags because if, if she's just a voluntary missing person or she's, you know, she's doing her own thing, they wouldn't have stated that they believe she's in imminent danger. So is, has she been taken by a group? Um, does this involve her father? Was there some sort of debts owed, um, the father or the family? Again, I'm just spewing out some, some, uh, theories. Uh, none of this is fact. It's just my thoughts. Um, but the bottom line is we all need to pray for her and this family because they have been through a lot this month and I do hope that they, uh, that Hannah's okay. I really do. And if she is safe, that she reaches out to law enforcement and lets them know that. But in the meanwhile, we'll keep, uh, spreading, uh, the word and sharing her poster and, uh, hopefully she's found, you know, sooner rather than later. All right, guys, I hope you have a great rest of the day. And most of all, stay safe.